Um, I'm here to introduce uh, Leah Michaelis, um, who's been um, developing uh, WordPress plugins for WooCommerce in her past and now works at GoDaddy. And she's going to talk about uh, nurturing your customers. So a big applause for Leah. Hi everyone, um, it's my first WordCamp, so uh, it's really exciting to be here. A uh, little bit nerve-wracking, so I'm sorry if I'm becoming very red. It's just I don't breathe enough when I speak, so uh, it will be it will be a fun. Uh, okay, so I am here to talk about nurturing your customers and your leads. Um, so. As was said briefly, like I work for GoDaddy, we work uh, specifically on WooCommerce, so I'm not as familiar with WordPress. I'm, you know, really eager to hear any advice on on WordPress. But uh, I've worked for for WooCommerce for quite a bit of time now, uh, and it's really a privilege to help merchants get more revenue and really grow their stores, and that's what we do every day, which is really awesome. Um, okay, all right. So today, what I'm going to talk to you about a little bit is. First, why you should nurture your, your customers and your leads and how that applies to a little bit more than, than e-commerce only. Uh, and then we'll go into three strategies to, to do that. So the first one being product reviews, the second being card abandonment, and the third being points and rewards. All right, so let's jump into it. Um, so why should you nurture your customers and what should you um, nurture your leads? What should you care? So even if you're not in, in e-commerce, you know, you, you know what nurturing means. It really means engaging, really bringing, helping the, the person bring forward to the next step. Um, it, it's really sort of touch points, right? So for e-commerce specifically, nurturing leads and customers helps you get more sales. Obviously, as an e-commerce shop, that's what your goal is, is to get more revenue, uh, bigger profits, right? Um, so to be able to turn a visitor on your on your store into all the way into a brand advocate, which is where you're going to make the most money, um, there are several steps, right? Um, so everyone starts as a visitor. Approximately 96% of people that visit your sites are not ready to buy today. So that's really not good, right? Like most people that come to your site, they're not going to make a purchase. Um, and to bring someone from a visitor to a customer, it takes approximately 10 lead nurturing steps, which is a lot, right? Um, and it can be different things. It can be like looking at your site. It can be engaging on social media, over email. It's, it's really a bunch of different things. And then what we want to do is to take someone from a, being just a customer to being a, a repeat customer, right? They come back for more purchases. Um, and only approximately 20% of people will do that. So that's just not a lot. Um, but then to get to a brand advocate, uh, that's really the goal because they are worth so much more than their first purchase value, right? Approximately 10 times more. So if someone spent, you know, 100 bucks the first time they came, if they become a loyal customer, if they become like a repeat customer, they can bring you all the way up to 1,000, which is really, really exciting. Um, so first strategy. So I'm going to cover three. There are many other ones. I'm sure there are some people that will cover others today. So um, it will be great. There are a lot of e-commerce talks today, which is super exciting. Um, so I'm going to go into product reviews. And we're going to discuss a little bit how that helps uh, someone make a purchase. So everyone knows what a product review is, right? It's when you leave um, you know, um, an, uh, or a, an opinion uh, about a product that you've, you've purchased, right? Um, so they really are the voice of the customers. They really are what um, sort of is the so social proof that your products and services are worth buying. Um, what you want to do is you want to enable them as soon as possible. Obviously, there are some built-in for WooCommerce, which is great. Um, and the, the, the three key benefits of product reviews is, is really, as I just mentioned, you know, social proof. But the two other ones are a little bit less obvious. Um, the first one is that they allow you to build your brand. So if you get a product review on your site and you respond to it, that is really a great opportunity for you to establish your brand voice, to establish you know, a good relationship with your customers, um, and really take it for, uh, to the next step. And they're also really good for SEO, because they add uh, a lot of relevant content to your pages. And so obviously, that's, that's great for ranking. So um, approximately 92, you know, that those are studies, so the numbers can vary, obviously, across uh, localizations and, and whatever. But an American study found that approximately 92% of visitors will hesitate to buy if there's no reviews. Um, again, that, that's a very high number, and so that, that's really um, showing you that you want to get reviews as soon as possible. So um, I'm going to go into starter tips, and then we'll go into a bit more like pro tips. 
Um, so as I, as I mentioned, you know, they're built in into WooCommerce, so you don't even have to purchase anything additional. It's really great. However, as a bonus, if you want to automate the way you ask for reviews, you may want to look into an email marketing tool, right? So there are many out there, Clavio, Omnisend, um, many other ones actually. Um, and so you want to you want to look into that because that really allows you to just sit back and relax and have the, the sort of the, the platform send emails for you. Um, you know, one, one common question is how soon after the purchase should I ask for a review? So that depends on what you're selling. If you're selling consumables, you may want to ask one or two days after the purchase because people will probably eat your food, right? But if you're selling ski gear, you may want to ask after the winter, right? Not in the middle of summer. Um, so it just really, it just really depends on what you're selling. Uh, in terms of the content, um, that's going to be a bit of a repeat uh, phrase for me that you're going to hear today, but it's you want to personalize the email as much as, much as possible. You want to make sure you use the customer name and you want to make sure you use the products that they bought, right? Obviously, to remind them what they're going to leave the review about. Um, another thing that's going to come, come back again is you want to you have a single CTA, right? You don't want to confuse them. You want to have a single call to action and say, like, this is where you should leave the review. And then the last thing is that a lot of people don't necessarily think about is that you want to explain why the review is important to you. And so that may be either because like, okay, I'm a small business, you know, a review can make a big difference for me, this, this would be great. Or it could be like, oh, I'm looking to provide better services for you, so I would love to hear from you on how I can improve. And there are a lot of studies that show that if you ask and you give a reason for the favor, people are more willing to do to help you out. Um, so those are, are you know, the, the starter tips. Um, and uh, again, as I said, like another stat that really shows you that reviews are so important as, as a sort of a lead nurturing step uh, is that they can lead to an increase, an 18% increase in sales. And that's huge. You know, it's like if you have zero review and then you get one review and that's an 18% increase in your sales, that that's, makes a big difference. So um, some pro tips for, for the reviews. Um, Obviously, it's probably everyone's nightmare to get a negative review. Um, but what you want to do to, to help uh, avoid that a little bit is you want to surface help. Um, so that, again, I mentioned you want a single CTA for the review. You want a single button in your email that says, here is how you leave a review. But you also want to make sure that they know how to reach out for, 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 to you for help. So that could be like a postscript or something, but that says like, hey, if you run into an issue with the product, please let me know. That really helps. Uh, alleviate the negative reviews. Um, so that's the first tip. The second is, even though it hurts, even though it's really not um, fun, you want to show the negative reviews on your site. Uh, and the reason is because we all know about fake reviews. Uh, if you go to a site and there's, you know, a thousand five-star review and then zero other reviews, it's probably bought, it's probably fake. Um, unless you're really, really lucky. But, um, it, you know, and showing the neg negative reviews really helps build trust with the people that want to buy from you. Uh, and then I mentioned that a little bit ar already, but you want to respond to reviews. And, and that really helps you uh, develop deeper relationships with your customers. That really helps you build the, the brand, uh, being known for customer service, which is super important. Um, so that's another pro tip. Um, that obviously can take a lot of time, um, but it's worth it. Um, and then the last tip um, is a little bit controversial, so don't necessarily follow it depending on, on how you, you, you feel about it, but there are some uh, businesses that, that offer a small incentive for leaving a review. You want to be careful with that because obviously you don't want to say, you know, leave, uh, you know give me a, a good review and then I'll give you 50% off. That, that's illegal in some countries. That obviously is not uh, good to do, but there are some ways to position things like, you know, you know a small incentive like free shipping or 5% or off or, or loyalty points, which we'll cover later. Uh, but again, don't ever specify that you, it needs to be a good review, right? It obviously needs to, to be the, the truth. Um, okay, so those were um, really the tips for the product reviews. Um, those are tend to be a little bit more helpful in the, I guess, the top of the funnel, right? Like when people are visitors, when people they're, they're, they haven't bought from you or they haven't bought from you frequently, um, that's where that lead nurturing step is more useful than if someone has already bought like a ton from you, they don't necessarily need reviews. So continuing down um, our funnel a little bit, we're going to talk a little bit about cart abandonment, which is uh, a topic that's really uh, near and dear to my heart because I worked on a, on a cart abandonment platform with Skyverge, the, um, the company I was at before we got acquired by GoDaddy. Um, and it's fantastic. It helps a lot. Uh, it really grows your revenue. It's, it's a fantastic way to, to get more uh, money, but also like help customers finish their purchase journey. 
So um, I'm sure everyone is familiar with cart abandonment recovery, but essentially what happens is when you browse a site, uh, you add something to your cart and you just don't complete the checkout. Uh, I'm sure everyone has done that at least a few times. Uh, I'm definitely guilty of that. I think it's uh, just because you, know, you browse on your phone and then you, I don't know, some, someone interrupts you or whatever and you don't ever finish. So you can see the stat, approximately 70% of carts are abandoned, uh, which is huge. It's, it's really frustrating for stores to see people adding things to their carts and just never actually making the final purchase. Um, so the cart recovery campaign is one of the tools that really helps you get that rec uh, recover that revenue, get that recover that revenue that you would have lost otherwise. So obviously the benefits you know include that, but also um, it allows you to, to again create a, a positive and personalized touch point with a potential customer. Um, the other thing is that's also great is it's the same as, as product reviews. If you use an email marketing platform, you can set it up once and then never think about it again, uh, which obviously is the dream of every entrepreneur is, you know, you make money in your sleep. Um, it, it would be awesome. So it, it's, a great to, uh, it's a great way to, to actually just make money while you do nothing. So with the, the company I was at with Skyverge, uh, we saw over, you know, a few thousand um, clients and, and you know, several millions in, in revenue, uh, we saw that people recovered on average 15 to 20% of carts, which again is huge. If you have 70% of your carts that are abandoned, but you can recover 20% of those, it's, it's a lot of money that you would otherwise just have lost. Um, so again, start the tips and then we'll go into pros. Um, you, in this case, there is nothing built in for into WooCommerce. Um, you have to use a, a, an e-commerce email management tool. Um, there are plugins, there are third parties, there, there, there are lots of solutions. So you may want to look into what works best for you in terms of pricing and what, what they support, uh, but you have to go with a third party. Um, in terms of, of setup, what we've seen works work best is a, a three-part campaign, uh, meaning that you're going to send three emails. The first one being an hour after, the second being 24 hours after, and then the third being 48 hours after. The reasoning is um, when you're a customer that adds something to your cart, again, you might be in the middle of, of something. So if you are ready at home to make the purchase, an hour is going to be enough to remind you. But if you were out and about like shopping downtown or, or doing something, um, you know, 24 hours might be more effective for you. So the, the reason we have those three emails is really to help uh, touch the customers at every point in their journey. As I mentioned, content is a little bit repetitive because I think that's just best practice for any communication is you want to personalize as much as you can. Uh, customer names and, and the content of their car is super important. Uh, those email marketing platforms support that you know, from the get-go, so you don't have to do anything fancy. Um, and you want to always include like a single CTA. We've seen folks, you know, include several buttons. It just confuses people. So you want to include a single one. And again, the great thing about that is that it will regenerate the cart. So if people click on the, the example right now, which, which says resume checkout, it will regenerate the cart and it, it's ready for them to make the purchase. Um, so that's great. And it's usually it's built in into those platforms. So um, with Jilt, with, with, uh, that was the email marketing platform for Skyverge, um, what, we, what we saw is that of the carts that were recovered, the majority came from the first email. However, a, you know, a, a, a further 40% came from the second and third. Um, so again, it doesn't add up to 100%. I'm sure you can all do math. Uh, the, the rest were from the fourth and fifth email, but again, we, that was so little that we don't recommend using that. Um, but you can see, that having a second or third email is really effective. It really brings uh, a lot more than just having one. So some, some pro tips. Um, the first one is a little bit repetitive uh, to product reviews. Um, you want to, again, ask for if they need help, right? Um, and the reason is because the, I don't have the exact statistics, but one of the top, I think, five or 10 reasons people actually abandon their cart is they, have, they run into an issue during checkout. So if the first touch point that you um, do with them is, hey, how can we help? Uh, it really can help uh, actually get them through the purchase. Maybe their card had a problem or any, any other possibility. Um, the, second, the second one is actually offering an incentive. In this case, it's, a li it's more um, accepted than for um, product reviews because you are actually um, 
you know, you're not, you're not, you're not actually like buying them uh, for, for anything, right? However, what we really um, suggest is actually doing it at the third email, not the first one. And the reason is you don't want to devalue your brand, right? You want to make sure that your brand is still perceived as, you know, uh, you know nice and, and, and sort of um, um, expensive, right? You don't want to give them a 50% discount uh, an hour after they, they lost the checkout, right? Um, so if you do it in the third email and you give like a relatively small incentive, like, you know, maybe 20% off or free shipping or whatever, that can really help them complete the checkout. Um, and then one thing about um, copy is you, wanna, you may, you may want to play with like urgency or, or like, you know, limited stock or we're saving your, your item for a certain number of, number of time or um, obviously don't lie <laughs> too much, right? Like if you don't have limited stock, maybe don't say that, but um, it is important to play with the urgency a little bit so that they can uh, complete their purchase more, more quickly. Um, and the last thing I will say here uh, is that as every single email marketing um, strategy, capturing emails as soon as possible in the journey and segmenting emails based on the attributes of a customer really helps, right? If someone is based in a certain country or if someone adding, adds a certain uh, product to their cart, maybe you want to tell them a different message than someone that does something else. Um, and obviously you want to capture their email as, as early as possible, otherwise you can't send them the email. Um, and so there are different ways to do that. It, it needs to be early in the checkout process. There are some tools, not all, but some tools that when you uh, click on add to cart, they let you enter your email address. Um, so it, it really depends on, on what the tool actually um, supports. So the last, the last part is points and rewards. Um, that really is uh, a way to create uh, loyalty and, and brand advocacy. So what you want to do is you want to turn people into loyal advocates, right? Um, so to do that is, uh, you know, there are different ways, but setting up a loyalty program is really effective. Um, there are some studies from McKinsey that show uh, a lot of revenues. So I will go into that in a, in a sec, but really the benefits of loyalty programs is that they drive additional purchases. Uh, we all know that rewards really work as a psychological reinforcement. That's a very basic uh, psychological principle, but it really builds trust and mutual benefit because you know, they give you something, but you give them something back. So loyalty programs are, are really effective. Uh, as I mentioned, McKinsey found that of the people that redeem their points, so not everyone that participates in the program, but of the people that redeem their points, um, you can make more money from them, like up to 50, 15 to 25% per year, uh, which again is, is, is really big. Um, so some tips. Um, there are a lot of extensions and plugins out there. Uh, Feel free to choose whichever works for you. The, the, one of them is, for example, WooCommerce points and rewards, but there are many of them. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you reward the customers for several um, actions, right? So not only for spending money, but also for doing things like leaving a product review, it's full circle, um, sharing a photo, completing a profile, or reaching a milestone, like a birthday or a certain amount of money spent. Um, one thing that's really important with content here is that it's very clear what they get what, and, and when. So if they get 100 points on their profile, what are they going to get as a benefit? If they get 500 points, what are they going to get? Um, so that's very important to have this clarification either on your website or in, in an email. And so the last sort of uh, slide before we, we wrap up with the key takeaways um, is really the pro tips, right? So you want to get people excited about your program. Um, so whenever they actually get points, you may want to explain to them, okay, like this is what you got, this is what you're going to get in the future. Um, really try to, to hype it up. Um, and one thing that is very important is to reward referrals because we know that people that are referred are, are way more likely to make a purchase than people that are not. Um, so you can automatically reward referrals by points and whatever um, using the, those, those uh, points and, and, and reward programs. And then the last point that I, I'm gonna, that, that could be a whole talk, so I will be very quick, but you may wanna consider pairing it with memberships. So if you have memberships set up on your site, members could get more points than non-members. It's a sort of a, a virtual cycle to encourage memberships and to then encourage loyalty. Um, so that could be something to consider. All right, so key takeaways, um, and then we'll go into questions. Um, so as a visitor, you know, you're not likely to purchase, so you wanna use product reviews. As a customer, Let's get them uh, actually finish their, completing their checkout. So you want to do cart recovery. To get a repeat customer, you want to use loyalty programs uh, because it really helps. And then to get you know, to a, a brand advocate, really reward referrals, really drive more sales through that. 
All right, so that's it for today. I think I am on time, but I really want to thank you. Um, and yeah, I hope you learned something today. Thanks a lot, Leah. Um, we got some time for questions. Th thanks a lot for being on time. That was perfect. Uh, do we have any questions? That was so clear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, it was about um, marketing email laws, about uh, sending an email for recovering a cart. You have to get uh, the client's approval. Yes. So, Yes, <laughs> yes, you do. Um, the laws vary by by uh, countries, obviously, but with GDPR, yes, that's uh, that's one that you need uh, approval for. Yeah. Um, in the in the states, if your clients are in the states, um, you don't necessarily need approval because it's considered as part of the sort of regular touch point with clients, but it's obviously preferred generally. Yeah. You, for example, or if they're subscribers, you can also use their, their email, yeah. Hi, uh, great talk. Uh, everything you said basically was uh, like targeted to the people that already left an email on your website. How do you target those who did not make, make cookies? Or, uh, I don't know. Elaborate, please. Yeah, no, that's a very good question. Um, it's a very difficult answer as well. I think that's a, a big struggle for e-commerce in general. Um, so the you know, there are different solutions. You could also do a pop-up, um, you know, say something like, you know, if, like, please leave your email and you get these type of things. Um, for uh, pr product reviews, typically you will have their email automatically because you don't, you sh it's very rare to be able to purchase something without an email. But for card recovery, yes, that's the main one. Um, at, there is no end, like, you cannot do card recovery in the email automated way if you don't have an email. So one one thing is, as I mentioned, is, having a little box under the add to cart button that li lets them leave their email like super early on. But yeah, there is, for, for cart recovery, there is no good way around that, sadly. Sorry. <laughs> All right, one last question. Yes, I'm not sure if it is a question or just a comment. Uh, regarding the abandoned carts, I have seen uh, two approaches sometimes, even consciously, abandoning my card, I will get a price change, either higher or lower. So how have you seen that? Or are there any best practices? For example, uh, to many of us sometimes, especially uh, bo booking for flights Airlines, yeah. is yeah. always more <laughs> yeah. expensive if you hesitate. In some other cases or portals, I have seen you get a discount if consciously you abandon the card a couple of times. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Um, the, the airline system is unfortunately, they, they look at the, uh, demand um, automatically, so that's an algorithm. Um, so that, there's not a lot to do, like airlines is a particular industry. Um, for the other ones, um, I have not met a client that automatically increases the price if you, like, like on purpose. Again, air, air, airline being the exception, but... Um, I think, I think the vast majority of um, beginning merchants that, that use WooCommerce or that, that sort of use Skyverge, that use GoDaddy and whatever, what we've seen is that they offer a small reduction in price at the 30 minutes. So if you, if you wait 48 hours to complete your checkout, they, they offer a small thing, but it's not significant because they don't want to devalue their brand. Um, so the answer to, to your question, I think, is the, the airlines industry, they work on demand, so obviously they are incentivized that if there's a lot of people looking at the same flight, they want to, you know, they, they have the chance and the luck, because it's a limited supply, to actually increase the price. It's very uncommon for other industries to do that. Um, and then the vast majority of industries don't change their prices. They may offer you the coupons through the cart recovery. Uh, but I agree, airline sucks. <laughs> Not fun. All right, uh, thanks a lot, Leah. Thanks, that was a great talk. Um.